so as you can see here this is bridge rectifiers okay bridge rectifiers basically the bridge rectifier contain four diodes inside it and of course four terminals you can find other kind of bridge rectifier that is simply for diodes i show you in the motherboard so here for example we have four diodes here this is bridge rectifier okay bridge rectifier so this component as you can see is used to filter the voltage in order to get a continue voltage we find this component in the switch mode power supply okay so basically here we have plus and minus and we have ac okay so here as you can see this is all this component has three terminals but i will show you exactly the method that you can use to identify the type of this component so this component as you can see here are transistors these are mosfets here we have the schutke diode <coughs> or diode rectifier and over here this is voltage regulator so how can i know whether this is transistor or mosfet or voltage regulator regulator i show you how in the next lectures so basically here for example for the mosfet the mosfet we called it power mosfets these are used in order to transform the power from one point to another point for example we can apply here for example 230 volt and get here for example 19 volts or 12 volt the same working principle for the transistor okay and for voltage regulator basically it regulates the voltage it has input ground and output okay input ground and outputs for example if the input is 12 volt the output output will be 5 volt okay so for the shitki diode this is just to filter the voltage to make the voltage a continue voltage we find it in the switch mode power supply okay and for example of course for transistor we have base collector emitter for mosfet we have gate drain and source so i will show you in the next lectures how you can identify if this component is a transistor mosfet should be diode or voltage regulator so basically here as you can see this is inductors or coils an inductor is simply a wire okay or a winding so this is inductor basically here we have two inductors we have this red inductor and this one this orange inductor here basically we have another type of inductor as you can see this is another type of inductor we have another type of inductor basically we find this kind of inductor in the computer motherboard especially desktop motherboard so basically the inductor is used to adjust the current especially to increase the current in the circuit okay so here as you can see we have fuses okay this is fuses this one for example this is a blown fuse or a burned fuse okay so this fuse basically is used for protection and of course the fuse has two characteristics okay if we focus here for example let's see the characteristics for example for this fuse so let's see this side so as you can see here so let's focus a little bit as you can see so we have here three amps okay we have three amps as you can see and of course we have 250 volt okay 250 volt okay so three amps 250 volt so <clears throat> for example we have this bad fuse if we want to change it when another one we should respect the characteristics three amps 250 volt okay and of course here this is a serviceable fuse so the fuse is used basically for protection to protect the circuit from over voltage or over current so here as you can see this is capacitor this is basically electrolytic capacitor we call it also 
polarized capacitor or chemical capacitor. So basically, this capacitor has also two characteristics, as you can see. For this one, for example, we have 220 volts and 680 microfarad. Okay, for this, for example, as you can see here, we have 150 microfarad. 150 microfarad and 400 volts. So basically, the capacitor, as you can see, this kind of capacitor contains two terminals the negative terminal and the positive terminal. So this capacitor basically is used in filtering to filter the voltage in order to get a continuous voltage in the circuit. Okay, so of course, for this kind of capacitor, you will find many types. So this, for example, this one is, this is basically SMT capacitor. We call this SMT capacitor. This is, we find this kind of capacitor in the desktop or even laptop motherboard, as you can see. Okay. Uh, this is SMT capacitors. Okay. Then, as you can see, we have here relay. This is basically relay. Okay. So this relay contain inside it a switch and inductor so if we focus here for example so if we focus here for example so let's see the relay here so as you can see here we have here as you can see inductor do you see inductor here we have inductor here and over here we have a switch okay. inductor and a switch so the same working principle for this one also as you can see so we have here inductor okay so basically this relay used in order to transform power from one point to another point and it has of course the characteristics so for this one for example here 100 so we have 10 amps 250 volts and here we have basically 28 volts so this relay for example will transform this voltage to this voltage okay then as you can see we have transformers so transformers has basically two stages the primary winding and the secondary winding as you can see here, we have primary winding and secondary winding so the transformer basically contain main inductor inside it for this one for example these two pins for one inductor and these two other pins for another inductor okay in the first in the primary winding and in the secondary winding as you can see also we have two inductors the same also for this one as you can see okay so the transform basically use it to transform the energy from one side to another side for example Depending on the winding in the primary stage and the secondary stage, the voltage depends on the number of winding. For example, here, if the winding, for example, we have 200 in the primary stage and in the secondary stage we have 100, so the voltage here will be the double of here, okay? So then, as you can see here, we have a resistor. This is basically a resistor. So the purpose of the resistor in the circuit is to limit the current, okay? To limit the current uh, in order to protect the circuit, okay? So basically, the resistance has just one characteristic, is the resistance, okay? So you can check the resistance using the multimeter or based on this color, as you can see over here. Okay, so this is the resistors. And of course, there is other type of resistors. We called it ACMD resistors. I will show you ACMD resistors right now. So as you can see here, this is ACMD resistors. All this black component are SMD resistors. Okay, SMD means surface mounted device. Then, as you can see here, we have diodes, okay? So, this is basically diodes, okay? So, this is basically diodes. So, as you can see, diodes basically has two terminals. Here, we have the cathode, and here, we have the anode, okay? So, the cathode is the negative terminal, and the anode is the positive terminal. So, this kind of component is used for two purposes. So, for protection, purposes and in order to filter the current and to get a continuous voltage okay that's why we find the bridge rectifier basically these two diodes could be used as a bridge rectifier 
so here as you can see this is basically optocoupler or opto isolator this is a six terminal optocoupler or opto isolator of care of course there is, there is other type of opto coupler for example as we have here in this motherboard for example this is opto coupler four pins opto coupler okay so here also in this motherboard as you can see we have opto coupler as you can see here okay so it connects the primary stage the primary stage with the secondary stage so basically the opto coupler has as a purpose to check whether the output voltage is valid or not if the output voltage is not correct it will inform the ic or the oscillator that the voltage is not correct then the oscillator will adjust the voltage in the input here we have the output voltage and here we have the input voltage as you can see here this is the bridge rectifier four pins together so we can use this bridge rectifier as you can see or we can use this one okay the same so here we have as you can see the CMOS battery so this is CMOS batteries many type of CMOS batteries for example this one is used in the computer motherboard and of course in some laptop motherboard and this one also used it in the laptop motherboard and this one also a laptop motherboard so basically this battery has as a purpose to feed the BIOS or the chipset with 3.3 volt in order to conserve the data in it. Okay, so this is CMOS batteries. So basically, this compound here we call it Zener diode, the same as the diode, but the Zener diode has as a purpose to stabilize the current in a circuit. So here we have cathode and anode. Here we have another type of transistor, as you can see. This is basically transistor with, as you can see here, base, collector, emitter. So this is just a battery, okay? Here we have a battery, okay, with plus and minus. This is a 9 volt battery. We use this battery in order to generate the power. This is a headset, okay? This is a very important part. Many technicians neglect this part. This is basically one of the most important part in every motherboard. Without the heatsink, the component will burn out. The heat will be increased and then the component will be damaged. So I will show you, for example, one of the motherboard I have here, for example, this motherboard. Do you see? Here we have the heatsink for this IC. Here we have the headset for this MOSFET. We have another headset for this MOSFET. Okay, so the headset has a very important role in every board. So basically, this is the motor. The motor basically has two terminals a positive terminal and a negative terminal. So this is the motor, this is the rotor. Okay, so I will. So here, for example, inside the motor, you will find this winding, as you can see. This is basically the stator. This, this is the stator. And over here, as you can see, this is the rotor. Here, rotor that connects to the stator inside it, okay? So here, as you can see, we have BIOS. This is BIOS. This is basic input output system. This also is another type of BIOS, okay? So basically, BIOS contain a program inside it. Without the BIOS, the motherboard cannot work properly. So and over here, as you can see, we have ICs, many type of ICs. So this IC, this is, for example, a charge IC. This is a 3 volt, 5 volt IC, as you can see. And this is this IC is for RAM, random access memory. So this is control ICs. This IC is basically control the MOSFET in the motherboard in order to generate the specific voltage. So basically, this is a high tension voltage. Please. Do not touch. When you find this kind of transformer, never touch it with your finger. Pay attention because it contains a high voltage. Okay, so we find this one in the televisions and the big devices that has screens and that display the pictures and videos. A high voltage. Pay attention with this kind of component. 
So this is oscillator, okay? Here we have oscillator. This oscillator basically we find it, we find this kind of oscillator in the power switch mode, power supply board. I will show you for example some board where I have this kind of oscillator. This one for example, we have the oscillator over here, as you can see, okay?